Hello one, hello all, welcome to the top 20, 20 to 11, although it's not completely top 20. We're, uh, we're almost there, we're almost there. You've watched me nonsense talk for two hours. Let's, we're, we're hitting the home stretch. Number 20. Number 20 is 7852, which is a documentary about the shower scene in Psycho. Man, if only a YouTuber had talked about that shower scene before. No, in all seriousness, uh, this, this documentary is a thousandfold better than, than my little two minute video on the shower scene of Psycho. They get a bunch of celebrities together. They take everything from Psycho and let you know the, the elements of the film or, or the scene that are culturally significant and, and why, it, why it's such a big deal. Um, there's not much else I could tell you about this. It's, it's, it's a 90 minute documentary about a three minute scene. So if you're a, a movie kid, it's certainly something to, to check out because it's, it's quite well made. Number 19, searching. Um, my top half has two webcam gimmick movies in it and, and neither are cam, which is the horror darling for the second half of 2018. Um, I don't know, maybe I just like the webcam gimmick. I, I don't know, but this is done. Uh, it, it's a, it's not a horror movie like Unfriended is. It's, it's, it's a thriller. It's a, a whodunit that um, sure at times feels like elements are contrived. You're gonna, you're gonna scratch your head at certain parts, but you know, they're, you're kind of painted into a corner regardless with this movie because uh, the gimmick of being on a webcam or a, or a phone cam really kind of restricts you. So you, there's times where you're going to wonder like, why is he, why is he talking to a detective over Skype? Like that would never happen. But uh, you know, just, just let the, let the movie take you on the ride and, and you, should, you should be just fine because it is, it's a really, really good story. Like I said, it's, it's, it's not perfect. It's not, without contrivances, but um, if you can get in the mindset of, of what the movie's trying to tell you, it's a decent story. And uh, again, a whodunit, not, not a horror movie. I don't know why people keep saying that this, they think this is a horror movie. It's, it's I don't think it's a horror movie at all. It's, it's just a, a dude who's, whose daughter's missing and he's uncovering all these facts about her uh, or, or where, where, like what her life is. and and how much he didn't know about her. And yeah, if you need to tell yourself that it's a horror to, to make yourself feel better, I, I, I guess. I don't know. Number 18, Thoroughbreds. Um, I've seen a lot of people compare this to Heathers, which um, sure, it's a reserved black comedy that, that doesn't try to be too ambitious with the story and um, if, if anything, it kind of wraps up a little, a little too tight, a little too quick. But there's, there's a sit like for for all the dark humor and everything. There's a scene that's just menacing, just a, a, a one shot, and, a, and they're they're holding this this shot while something bad happens, and it's 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 quite haunting the the way it's just uh, what we're being presented on screen. This is the second time in 2018 actually that uh, your ears are doing the work for you in a scene. And I guess we'll get, we'll get to the other one later, but Dark Heathers meets American Psycho. 17, American Animals. Um, <laughs> this is like part, part fictionalized and part the actual people. So this is based on a true story then. Uh, the people who try to rob an art, art exhibit from their college. So I, th I think they tell, I don't know if I'm giving this away, but I think they tell you right away that, you know, they fuck up. If that's a spoiler, I, ap I apologize. But um, it's, it's a really interesting twist to see uh, a movie that's, you know, a dramatization of a story and then going back and forth between the actual people and, and it, it plays into the narrative well enough where where you're actually kind of surprised with certain things and um, really unique way to tell a story, but uh, the, the movie itself is, is quite engaging with, with um, 
what's his face from American Horror Story. That's reason alone if you're a 16 year old girl, right? Right? Upgrade. Ho holy shit. 2018 for me was a bunch of movies that I, I didn't think to give any time to. And then when I ended up seeing them was completely shocked. Not, not unlike RoboCop, but it's uh, an R-rated good time. Revenge? Mm. Go, go watch the trailer. It's, it's quite surprising how, how good this movie is with, with bootleg Tom Hardy. 15 is Vice. Um, Adam McKay uh, doing Adam McKay things. Apparently he's got a style and and it's prevalent here. If, if you've seen the big short um, and the interesting way that, that the narrative is told and the, the, the way they go back and forth with certain elements, that, that appears to be his thing because this movie jumps a bit. People were complaining about the editing, but nobody was complaining about the editing in the big short. And they're very, very similar, very, very similar paths taken to how the story is told and just as um, humorous a, a look at some unhumorous events. Number 14, Overlord. Um, another movie that completely shocked me. It just, uh, I think I saw this opening weekend, didn't have much anything invested into it. And man, do they grab you by the balls in that opening scene. It's a shame there's a movie like Saving Private Ryan out there because, wow, the opening scene is quite, quite engaging, quite incredible. Um, not unlike Edge of Tomorrow, uh, the, the plane scene. But again, like it's a, it's a nice table setter and, and the, the movie doesn't really quit. It, it, it fills out that, that broad, giant pair of shoes to fill. And it does so with a reserved story with an isolated, you know, it's, it's a World War II story that's taking place over the course of a, a what, a, a square mile of land. So, you know, it, it doesn't, doesn't get too ambitious with its storytelling. It's just one little horror element that that is presented in this World War II story. 13 Avengers Infinity War. Tired of superhero movies. Uh, the, the one complaint I would always have with these types of movies is there never appears to be stakes. Uh, you know the good guy's gonna make it, especially because you, you, you know that they have six different things planned in the future. This actually has stakes and pays some of them off. Um, it, it, I don't know if I'm like a, a, a superhero movie troll or whatever, but because they finally, finally paid off some stakes and, and, and nobody was safe, it, it, I don't know, made it more enjoyable, even though it's it, technically, it's half a movie. It's a, a tad bit of a cliffhanger. Um, but the new one's coming out soon anyway. If you haven't seen Avengers Infinity War, uh, I don't know, how is the rock you're living under? Isle of Dogs, uh, Wes, Wes Anderson, too many, too many Anderson directors, Paul Thomas Anderson, just too many, too many directors named Anderson. I wanted to say Anderson. I was like, well, never mind. Stop motion film from Anderson, Mr. Anderson, that, uh, is, is incredibly made. Uh, if, if anything, it's, it's, uh, uh, Wes Anderson movies are hit and miss with me. And this was, it was good. I like Fantastic Mr. Fox a tad bit better, but I mean, that's not, that's not to slight the movie at all. It, it's, it's incredible. Uh, there's a, there's a moment in the third act where we get separated from something, but uh, it, it, it's, it's a good time. It, it really is a good time. And there's homages to, to cinema that most of which I didn't even get, but when, when they do, when it's something I do recognize, I'm like, oh, wow, that's, that's quite impressive. Uh, really, really great looking movie, uh, technically done incredibly well. If, if anything, watch it just to, just to see what, 
what people can still do with, with movies without computers, because holy shit. <laughs> Lastly, for this group, number 11, Deadpool 2. But CP, you hate comic book movies, you say. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> this movie is like a roast of comic book movies. And, oh man, is it more than welcome for me. And, and again, it, it's, it's, it's almost like a roast of comic book sequels. They, they, they do things in this movie that uh, are a bit tropey, but I, I think they're, they're winking at you. They're, they're in on the gag and, and it, it's on purpose. Maybe, maybe I just like people in leotard saying fuck. I, I don't know. But uh, that, that's, that's 11, Deadpool 2. Um, and that'll do it for this portion of the list. Uh, up next, the top 10. CP's top 10 of 2018. Are you excited? Me neither. One, two, three, one, two, three. Oh, I should do this. One, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, to discuss the impact and, and just how many cuts and, and edits and, and, and the, 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 the social, just, just everything that, that makes the shower scene from 78, from, 70, from, from Psycho, uh, culture, they cover everything that is in Psycho and makes it culturally significant. That's a hard word to put together there. <clears throat> they take everything. <laughs> they take. <clears throat> they take everything from Psycho, and uh, they take every. <laughs>